When is a model steam engine not worth rebuilding? This is part 10. In this episode I show the milling and shaping of the base. To make the base look better I reamed the holes a quarter of an inch and made some bushes which were then pressed into the holes in the mounting lugs so that the base resembled a casting. At the end of the video I show the fully painted engine running on the bench. With a new base plus a new coat of paint and other refinements it's a really nice little thing. You see me cutting out the base plate from a piece of mild steel using my milling machine. This video is of course speeded up, it's a much slower process than this and it's a good idea to use some coolant but for the purposes of the video and the fact that I don't like the smell of the stuff I'm not using coolant, this is just a very sharp slot drill. Plus I'm only taking shallow cuts, never take deep cuts with a piece of metal sticking so far out of the machine vise. Also it's a good idea to wear some sort of personal protective equipment or PPE as it's known. A lot of health and safety is common sense. Generally, do not put your fingers anywhere near the spinning round bit and wear some protective glasses so that the sharp pieces of metal flying all over the place do not hit you in the eye. One thing that is very important when using a milling machine is the direction in which the cutter needs to move against the work. The milling cutter always needs to be moving towards the bit of metal that you're cutting, never with it. For instance, here you see me cutting the end parts, which are quite thin by now, and I'm moving the milling cutter towards the piece of metal. If I go with it the other way, it's likely to grab the piece of metal and everything would be destroyed, the milling cutter and my piece of work. Another good thing to remember is when you turn around the piece of metal in the machine vise, brush off any swarf first, because you don't want to get pieces of swarf trapped between the metal and the jaws of the machine vise. It's most important to make sure that the pieces of metal are held securely in the machine vise at all times. As you can see here, I'm still taking quite shallow cuts and the paintbrush comes in to just remove the swarf so I can see what I'm doing. By using the milling machine, I got the mountain lugs to approximately the right size and now I'm using a grinding wheel to profile them to more of an accurate size. If you look carefully at the scribed lines on the black paint, you will see that I have not gone fully to the depth of the scribed lines. When I mount the engine on this base plate, it may need a little bit of trimming. The main engine is a casting, and often castings are not bound to be exactly the size you think they are. As usual, I'm not wearing gloves, and as usual, the metal keeps getting quite hot, so I put it in my pot of water to cool it down before I carry on. You can also see once again that the little grinding machine moves all over the place. That's because it's not fastened down. And that's a health and safety no-no. Grinding wheels should always be fastened down. Mine isn't because I need to move it around to accommodate different sizes. And that's a very bad thing and it's very wrong. But it's only for the purposes of the video. I cannot recommend that anyone uses a grinding machine of any description, whether it be a rotary or a belt type, without it being bolted down securely to the bench. And this is a Stuart Sun engine with most of the green paint removed. Apart from the paint that didn't remove with the cellulose thinners which I've left in place as an undercoat. This original green paint was so well baked onto the engine, probably from years of running on steam, it seemed like a good idea to leave it where it was as an undercoat. All I'm doing now is accurately marking out the bed plate. And after machining the bed plate to the finished size, I drilled and reamed four holes in the mountain lugs. Then over to the lathe and all I had to do was turn four step bushes that pressed into the quarter inch reamed holes. And the hole in the centre of these bushes was 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Here's one of the bushes almost complete before final parting off. And now you see the bushes pressed into the base plate on the engine itself which has now been painted in Stuart Models Green. Here's the finished engine running quite sweetly. I fitted a replacement lubricator to the engine. The other homemade lubricator was a bit of a mess. This one is quite a nice looking one and works very well. And the other lubricator had a drain cock fitted to the bottom of it. And I used this in the crankcase to drain the oil. So that's about it for this short series. The engine runs very well as you can see here. And it's got a proper base plate with four mounting lugs. What more could you want? Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.